Hey boys and girls, we're going to talk about two of our already books that go along with week three lesson plan. And um, these are nonfiction books. Now remember, nonfiction means not fake. So that means that it's real. A nonfiction book teaches about information and facts about a topic. And that's just a little hint that I like to use to help me remember nonfiction, not fake. And then you can remember that fiction books are fake. Um, we had been reading some fiction books like um, My Rotten Redheaded Older Brother. That was a fiction text with made up characters. It was a made up story. But these books are nonfiction, which means they are real. And they give us information and facts about a topic. So the first one we're going to look at is Butterflies and Moths by Nick Bishop. We're not going to read through the whole book because they are very long, um, but we're just going to talk about what kinds of text features the book has, and then we'll read the first uh, one or two pages of the book. All right. Nonfiction books have text features that make them different from fiction books. Um, text features uh, could be photographs. Nonfiction books will usually have real photographs taken with a camera because they want you to see a real photograph of what they're teaching you about. Like this is a butterfly and that's a real photograph. If we flip through the book, we see real photographs and they've zoomed in on the picture so that you can see them really well. So this book is full of real photographs. That's one of the nonfiction text features. Another one, another text feature is captions. A caption is a little section of text that tells about a picture. So it tells you what's happening in the photograph or what the photograph is showing. Um, like this caption or this caption. So it helps us understand the photographs. So we have photographs and we have captions. Let's flip to the back of the book. In the back of nonfiction text, you can usually find an index. An index tells you what page numbers you can find certain topics on. So sometimes a nonfiction book will teach you um, about topics on lots of different pages. So like if we wanted to learn about um, caterpillar, see the word caterpillar? We could look at page 18 and 19. If we wanted to read about, this says caterpillars again, but it breaks it down by these different sections. So if we wanted to learn about the body, of caterpillars. Look at all these page numbers that it talks about caterpillar bodies. So an index helps you see what page numbers has certain topics. And then we have a glossary. That's another um, text feature. A glossary gives definitions. Let's pick a word and we'll read the definition. These are words from this nonfiction text and a glossary defines the words. So if you don't know what a word means, you can check in the glossary. Um, you may have heard this word before, a predator. A predator is an animal that lives by hunting other animals for food. All right, so it looks like this book has four text features. It had real photographs, captions, an index, and a glossary. All right, let's read the first two pages of this book. Butterflies and Moths. There is no mistaking a butterfly. Its colorful wings skip in the air like petals blown by the wind. Blues, reds, and yellows dance in the sunlight. Some shimmer like tinsel. A creature so beautiful should belong in a fairy tale. But butterflies are real. They dance through the woods and glide over fields. You can see them in parks and backyards, and they always catch your attention. Now we're going to read um, the caption that tells about this photograph. 
The tiger swallowtail is one of the most beautiful butterflies seen flying in gardens, forests, and meadows. And it says that it's shown at two times its actual size. That means they zoomed in two times the actual size so that you could see all the detail. Moths are more secretive. Most fly at night while you are in bed. If you are lucky, you might find one in the morning, sleeping by a porch light that has been left on. And if you take a look, you will see how moths differ from butterflies. Moths are less colorful than butterflies, and many rest with their wings open, not closed. Moths also often have fatter bodies covered with furry hairs. But it is not always easy to tell the two apart. A few moths are as brightly hued as butterflies and fly in the daytime, while some butterflies are as dull as moths. Yet both lead similar lives, changing from eggs to caterpillar to adults. Now we're going to read this caption. You can tell a moth from a butterfly by, by the antennae on its head. A male moth, like this luna moth, often has feathery antennae, while a female moth has thinner antennae with pointed tips. Butterfly antennae look different because they are thin with distinct knobs at the tips. If you look at this, now we know what these are called. These are its antennae. And that's a plural word. So this is an antenna, and this is the other antenna, and together those are called the antennae. All right, we're going to skip through and quickly discuss some pages because it does teach us that butterflies and moths both start from an egg. It's a small egg, and you'll see a little black dot inside the egg. And then a caterpillar, a baby caterpillar, will hatch out of the egg. And this says that as soon as a monarch butterfly caterpillar hatches, it eats its old eggshell. And that's shown at 45 times its actual size. That picture, they zoomed in 45 times. All right, so a caterpillar is born, and caterpillars can look all kinds of different ways. And then this page talks about how they um, wander away to find a safe place to turn into a pupa. This is when they make um, their cocoon. Let's read this caption that tells about these photographs. It says, a monarch butterfly caterpillar hangs upside down from a silk pad and squeezes out of its old skin to turn into a beautiful green pupa. And that shows it on the left. After a week or two, you can see the body of the butterfly ready to emerge. And that's on the right. Look at the body of the butterfly inside there, ready to come out, ready to emerge. And then they come out as a butterfly or a moth. So this book actually told us ways that they were different. Their antennae are different, um, but they are the same because um, they grow the same. They have the same life cycle. They start as an egg, then a caterpillar, and then a butterfly. They then, well, the caterpillar makes a cocoon, um, and then comes the butterfly or moth. All right, let's switch to earthworms and talk about this nonfiction text. Earthworms is by Claire Llewellyn and Barry Watts, and let's see what kind of text features this one has. So I see right off the bat that it has real photographs too. This is a real photograph of an earthworm. And if we flip through the book, we'll see other real photographs. It also has drawings or illustrations that are just not real photographs too. They can have that. These are real photographs. All right. Um, this one also has captions, just like the other book had. If we look right here, this is a caption that tells about this picture. So captions help us understand photographs. So it has real photographs, it has pictures. Um, if we look in the front of this book, this book actually has a table of contents. That is a text feature. The table of contents lets you know what page number 
that these headings are on. So if you want to read about a certain thing, you would go to these specific page numbers. And we'll do that here in a little bit. So they have a table of contents, real photographs, captions. Another text feature that this book has is it has diagrams. A diagram tells you it labels parts of something so that you know what the parts are called, like this diagram of a worm's body. See the names of those parts? We'll read that page here in a little bit. And let's see if we can find another diagram. That may be the best diagram picture in there. All right, so this one has a table of contents, real photographs, captions, diagrams, and then if we look in the back, we're going to see if this one has an index and a glossary like the other one. Look, it does. It has a glossary that gives definitions and an index that gives page numbers where you can find information on all these topics. All right, that one had even more text features than the other book. I think that one had um, six text features altogether. Um, and that's what makes nonfiction books different. That's one of the things that makes them different from fiction books. Um, they have text features that help you learn about a topic. Let's read a few pages out of the book Earthworms. We're going to look at our table of contents. And we're going to read all sorts of worms on page 6 and 7. All sorts of worms. Dig up any patch of earth in a garden or park. Look closely and you will probably see a wiggly worm. Worms that live in the soil are called earthworms. There are several kinds of earthworms. Let's look at this picture and caption. It says, most earthworms are reddish brown and about as long as your hand. Here's another diagram. I knew there was another one. There are many different kinds of worms around the world. Worms come in many colors and sizes. Some are so tiny that they are hard to see. Others, such as the giant earthworm of Australia, are as long as a car. Let's look at this diagram and let's read this caption. This giant worm from Australia is as long as a car. It is much larger than a garden worm. It labels this is the giant worm. This is the garden worm. So that really may not be a diagram, but it does label. So it does have labels. Maybe we could call that another text feature. It has labels. And then this is a caption. The brandling worm has a stripy skin. This makes it easy to recognize. Okay, I told you guys we would flip back to this page and look at the diagram a little bit closer. Let's look at this diagram. It labels the parts of a worm's body. So we have the front, the mouth is up here. These are segments. Do you see all the, a segment is another word for a part. So those are like synonyms. They mean the same thing. See the parts of the body, all the little segments that make up the worm's body. It looks like it has a lot of segments. It also has bristles, little bristles on there. And this is called the saddle. It says the saddle is where a worm's eggs are made. Wow. And then this is the back. So that diagram labeled the parts of the worm's body for us. Oh, I forgot one feature from this book. Um, and that's there were six. I had counted them up, but I forgot to say the sixth one. And it's the headings. This book has headings in it. A heading is a title that tells you what that page is going to be about. So see, a worm's body. That's what these pages are about. If we flip to the next page, feeding. These pages are going to teach us about feeding. So this is called a heading. So six text features in this book. Real photographs, captions, diagrams, headings, glossary, an index. Wow, that's awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about these books and we'll talk about them a little bit more um, in just a minute. We're going to do a lesson out of our already workbook.